welcome to Entertainment Tech. We have the latest for you in celebrity news, fashion, styles, and more. Welcome to the Celeb Chat segment. I'm Gabrielle Lozama. And I'm Micah Osberry. We'll be starting with the latest gossip. A verdict has been reached in the case of Kendall Jenner's alleged stalking incident. A California judge ruled Chavanon McKenzie not guilty on the charge of misdemeanor stalking. However, he was found guilty of trespassing. Jenner testified in court against McKenzie, who was found sitting on her driveway with his head between his knees earlier this year. Jenner explained that she immediately knew something was wrong, stating, quote, I wouldn't expect someone to be sitting on the side of the street. I definitely thought it was weird. It didn't make sense, end quote. Jenner then told McKenzie to leave her property when she realized that she had seen him on two other occasions at her home. Jenner stated in court, quote, I was crying, I was screaming, I was freaking out. I didn't know what his intentions were. I was freaking out, I was frightened for sure, end quote. Jenner told the court that she never left her vehicle and proceeded to honk and watch where he went. She proceeded to say that she didn't want to live this way and that she do doesn't feel safe in her home and stated, quote, I'm already the kind of person who's on edge, end quote. We hope this situation is resolved and she can feel safe again. As if the divorce were not already devastating enough for family, friends, and fans, Angelina Jolie and Brad Pitt are back in the tabloids for additional legal drama. On October 18th, Angelina was interviewed for four hours by two FBI agents who questioned the star and some of her children about an incident aboard a private plane, September 14th, in which Brad Pitt drank and allegedly became physical with one of the kids. The Los Angeles County Department of Children and Family Services has also continued to look into allegations of abuse. According to the insider, despite Pitt's sources denying any wrongdoing on his part, the DCFS has indefinitely extended the temporary parenting plan that was set to expire October 20th due to this ongoing investigation. That means Maddox 15, Pax 12, Zahara 11, Shiloh 10, and 8-year-old twins Knox and Vivian will continue to reside with Jolie Pitt, who has visitation. Michael Phelps may have spent a good portion of his summer winning gold medals, but that's not all he was doing. It's recently confirmed that the Olympic gold medalist married his fiancée, Nicole Johnson, back in June in Maricopa County, Arizona. On the actual wedding day, Nicole posted a message to social media stating, quote, such a memorable night with little fam bam, end quote. Nicole has recently been sharing details about what was assumed to be the upcoming nuptials when, surprise, the ceremony had already happened. She recently told news, source, news sources it'll be a small and instrument for the wedding and we're throwing a massive bash for everyone in the States, end quote. The swimmer for Team USA and his bride welcomed a baby boy named Boomer Phelps in May and in a matter of months, he experienced his first Olympics as well as social media fame. Now that Phelps is retired, the young couple is excited to settle into a normal life. Nicole stated, quote, Now we get to have fun. We get to enjoy parts of life that everybody gets to on a daily basis that we had to step away from so Michael could go and do what he needed to do. End quote. Congrats to the happy couple and their new family. On Tuesday, singer Sierra announced that she's pregnant. You heard that right. Sierra is pregnant and expecting her first child with husband Russell Wilson. Sierra made the official announcement on Instagram with a black and white photo of herself curled up with Wilson. Did fans see this coming, though? It seems that Sierra's wardrobe was not as discreet as she might have thought. Pregnancy rumors took off earlier this month after she had been seen out in baggy clothing and peplum tops. Nonetheless, the singer and Seattle Seahawks quarterback anxiously await the arrival of their future child. Sierra is already mom of a two-year-old son, Future Junior, who, shares, who she shares with ex-fiancé and rapper Future. This will be the first child for Russell Wilson. How excited are you about Sierra having another baby? I'm so excited. Her first child is so cute. He's adorable. I know, and it's kind of cute. Like, her first child was Russell Wilson, and they've been married for a little while, so it's really nice to see. Yeah, but did you hear on Twitter a lot of them were coming after her saying that, oh, like, why are you pregnant? But she's a married woman. Yeah, I mean, honestly, she's a grown woman. She can live her life how she wants. And it's kind of weird people are counting down the days to, like, make sure she's okay. And, like, that's not it's cool. It's no one else's business but theirs. <laughs> exactly. I think they kind of just mind their own business. I know people did the same thing with the Duggars because mm -hmm. one of them, like, ha got pregnant, like, 13 weeks or something crazy right after their wedding. Mm -hmm. So people are like, that doesn't add up. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. That's it for the Celeb Chat segment. Stay tuned for fashion news. There's one thing you can never have sex without. It's consent. Because sex without it isn't sex. It's rape. It's on us to stop sexual assault. Learn how and take the pledge at itsonus.org. Here's your check. Oh, you, you got it. You know, since I got rid of my car, I really enjoy walking. Okay. Got Getting pulled over for buzz driving could cost you around $10,000 in fines, legal fees, and increased insurance rates. Oh, you're home early. You live with your mom? That'll set your game back a few years. 
buzzed, busted, and broke. Because buzz driving is drunk driving. Welcome back to Entertainment Tech. I'm Michelle Polanka here with your fashion news. We have about two more months left in fall, so it wouldn't hurt to add a few more must-have pieces in your fall wardrobe this year. First, the classic high-waisted pants or jeans are still in trend. Whether you want to dress them down with a chunky knit sweater or dress them up with a tucked-in chiffon flowy blouse. A faux le leather crossbody bag is another essential piece for the season and perfect for both a night out or a daytime outing. Lastly, bring out that spring dress that's been hidden behind your closet since earlier this year for a romantic look. A dress with soft shades, pretty florals, or ruffles are perfect for warmer days of fall. But once the cold sets in, pair your dress with a thick cardigan and heavy duty boots. This year, fall is bold rather than neutral, especially in the beauty world. If you want to turn heads this fall, metallic foil eyeshadows should be your go-to. For lips, glitter lips are making a comeback. It's not as wearable, but it's easily paired with a simple eye look. For hair, it's all about the polished, slicked back high ponytail, which you can wear from class to a night out. And like for every fall season, dark lips are appropriate. Dark plum or berry lips can transform your look to edgy or elegant. A matte lipstick is recommended for a more classic look, but if you want to create an off-the-runway look, add a clear gloss on top. This is Amy Ratliff with Entertainment Tech, and I'm here to show you a fun, flirty fall look.
little cute now, but when my owner lost his job, it was rough. I was living on the street, and one night, me and this Cocker Spaniel got into it so bad, I wound up looking like an ice cream cone. I cried a little bit, but thankfully I got rescued, so I'm running, I'm jumping, all back to my old self, and I'm ready to give unconditional love, even if you put a lampshade on my head. So they say it's a man's world? I don't see anybody's name on it. While they were doing their thing, we slowly changed all that. Today, women can do anything men can do. And there's one thing we're even better at. Welcome back to Entertainment Tech. I'm Callie Carson. And I'm Gretchen Kernbach. And we're here with the On Screen Scoop. Jack the Reacher Never Go Back premiered on October 21st and is still in theaters now. In this action thriller, Jack Reacher, played by Tom Cruise, returns to the sequel based on the Lee Child's best-selling novel from 2013, Never Let Go. When Reacher gets news of his former head unit, Susan Turner, being falsely accused of treason, he sets out on a mission to prove her innocence. Throughout his journey, he has led to a major government conspiracy involving the murder of several American soldiers. While on the run as a fugitive from the law, he must uncover the truth and clear his name and prove that the head of his unit is innocent. The film only received a rating of 39% from Rotten Tomatoes, but 51% of the individuals said they liked the movie. Newly released on Facebook is the trailer for the upcoming 2017 movie, The Boss Baby, the, com the computer animated comedy film produced by DreamWorks Animation. The plot is about a seven-year-old boy who becomes jealous of his new baby brother, who to his surprise can talk. The current trailer does not reveal much about the storyline, but online write-ups describe the movie to be about CEO of a secret company trying to destabilize love in the world. Both brothers must team up to stop this force of evil. The movie involves an all-star cast of Alec Baldwin, Lisa Kudrow, Tobey Maguire, Steve Buscemi, and Jimmy Kimmel. Stay up to date on future tra trailer releases to get a better look at the movie expected on March 31st. Now in theaters is the new terrifying thriller Uiji, Origin of Evil. Directed by Mike Flanagan, this horror film reached an 80% rating from Rotten Tomatoes. This is the follow-up hit from the movie Uiji that premiered back in 2014. The storyline takes place in 1965 Los Angeles, where a widow and her two daughters run a seance scam business. While trying to make ends meet, the psychic mother decides to add an Ouija board as a part of their scheme. After adding what seemed to be a harmless new stunt, the small family is stunned when the board enables them to actually speak with the dead. To their surprise, the board unwittingly invites a dark, demonizing evil into their home, which possesses the nine-year-old's youngest daughter. The family must confront their supernatural fears and do everything they can to send the possessor back to the underworld. Oiji Origin of Evil will be in theaters until mid-November. October 23rd was the season 7 premiere of The Walking Dead, which no doubt left fans shocked and heartbroken. The previous season finale ended with the introduction of the new antagonist, Negan, and the foreshadowing of a murder. To the viewer's surprise, there was not one, but two murders, or should I say slaughters, of two top-tier characters. Guesses were made before the season premiered of who was to go, but within the first 15 minutes, it was Abraham who got the boot. Although he had been on the show since season 4, it was Glenn's murder that left uh, fans speechless. The season 1 native met his fate at the hands of Negan's bat shortly after Abraham, leaving behind his wife and unborn child. His last words were, quote, Maggie, I'll find you, end quote. If those two killings didn't make you hate Negan enough, he continued on by coaxing Rick into cutting off his son's arm, which to all of our relief was just a test and Carl got to keep his left arm. Down two members of their close-knit group, what is to come for Rick and the others? Will they break free of Negan's wrath? Stay tuned this season every Sunday at 9 on AMC. So how heartbroken were you when Glenn got the bat? Oh my gosh, it was terrible. I wasn't expecting. I was hoping it was at least going to be one of the like minor roles in the mm -hmm. show, but not Glenn. He was one of my favorite. He's been there from the beginning. It was just so heartbreaking. What like tripped me up was how they led on at the end of the season finale last season 
that I thought they were only gonna kill one person, and that's I what they know, said. Yes. And then when they killed Abraham, I was like, oh, all right, like he's a second tier character. So I wasn't like too sad or anything. And then they totally threw all the fans off when they when he um hit Glenn, and I think that like it scared me and then like broke my heart simultaneously. Yeah, exactly. And then seeing Maggie's reaction and just how heartbroken she was with the baby coming and everything, it's just. It was terrible. If anything, if anything, you just felt hopeless at the end of the episode. Exactly. Like you don't know what's to come. They're down two members of their like closely knit group. Just like right at the end, I was just depressed. Yeah, me too. It's like what you have no idea what's gonna happen next. And that's all for entertainment tech. We'll see you next week.